Okay, so we're back again. This is part three. Uh, sorry for getting long-winded. Um, it happens, I suppose. This is my happy place, so it's easy to talk about this shit. Anyway, uh, if you're still with me, this is part three. Just back to this. Uh, this, like I said, used to be a fabrication slash jig table that I made. Um, it's nice and true. It's square. I just didn't use it that much. Um, I stopped, kind of stopped building Jeep bumpers and stuff like that, which is what I made it for. So I decided to turn it into a CNC plasma table. And it's got, um, and it's, like I said, I'm not, obviously I'm still working on it, but my X and Y axis is on there. Um, it will be a three foot by five foot uh, cutting area. So not a huge table, but not tiny either. Uh, it's about as, I mean, obviously it's as big as I could put in here and still be able to walk around the damn thing. Um, if it was up to me and if I had unlimited space, it would be a five by 10 or a five by 12 table, but I don't have the space. So I'm going to work with what I got. Uh, let's see. I've got the main table kind of framed out. It's just tacked up. I got it all squared up and true. Like I said, I've got all the brackets and stuff for the rollers for the X and Y. Um, my, my Z carriage head for the torch head up and down on the torch height. Um, this is for the, the carriage, obviously. I went um, with an Everlast 60 amp uh, CNC plasma machine. It's brand new. Never plugged it in, but I don't know. It was cheaper than a hypertherm. I'm probably going to wish I bought a hypertherm, but... I saved a thousand bucks, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully it doesn't bite me in the ass. But if it does, hey, I'll just buy hypertherm and, and chalk it up to uh, you know, lesson learned. But anyway, I'm gonna use that. I got the computer for it, some other various stuff. This is obviously in in the middle of uh doing this project. I kind of put it on hold until I got done with the CNC milling machine. So that's where it's at. I got all the parts for it that I have. They're all stacked up on it, and it's just kind of sitting there waiting on me to finish it. It's going to be awesome when I get done with it. I'm really looking forward to it. I'm really looking forward to getting back on it so I can finish it up. But I got a lot of projects ahead of it, unfortunately. So anyway, that's where that sits. Uh, this is the old Craftsman. I think I got a video on this on the YouTube channel, so I won't get into that. But I've used the heck out of that thing. Um, really love that drill press. It's awesome so far. Got the beer fridge. Everybody needs a beer fridge. Let's see if we got any beer. Oh yeah, there's beer in there. What else? There's an old bottle of vodka. There's a, it's a good use for one of those magnetic trays that you get from Harbor Freight for beer tops. Uh, this is just a, a repurposed shelf that I had. It's a metal frame, wooden shelf. I use it for power tools. You never know what to do with power tools. Lots of grinders and drills and, you know, saws and sanders and porta bands and whatever else. Um, there's my, kind of my charging station for all the battery powered stuff. Um, fuel cans, rag, rag container, drop boards. There's a little parts tumbler. This is my master kind of to-do list and vehicle maintenance uh, reminder, some saw horses. That's pretty much it. Um, there's some storage up on the back wall there. Kids bikes, uh, some random longer pieces of wood, just whatever, all kinds of crap, some jack stands, there's plenty of crap in those cabinets. Um, got my 9,000 pound, uh, car lift in here, which I've had for about six years now. Gotten a lot of use of it over the years, but uh, really handy to have. Really helps for unloading machines too. Um, when you buy lathes and mills, you have to have a way of unloading them when you get them home. And this thing is phenomenal. Hook a bunch of straps to it, get it rigged up, and it'll lift it pretty easily. It's good for a 9,000 pound vehicle, so it'll lift most, most lathes and stuff anyway. Uh, I made this little, I don't know if you can see that. It's a triangular shaped, uh, I guess it'd be like a jib crane. It swings, you know, it swings on pivots. It pivots, you know, back on these two pivots here. And then the, the, the hoist itself slides along that bar all the way out to the end. And it'll pivot 180 degrees so that it actually gets very close to the roll-up door here. 
and it'll swing all the way over to the workbench. So, and anywhere in between, obviously. And I've picked up all kinds of crap with it. It's an 1100 pound hoist. I don't know if I trust my uh, wonderful triangular setup there as far as you know, hauling that much weight or holding that much weight or the beam that it's mounted to. It's not really designed for this, obviously, but it's, I have definitely picked 600 pounds plus up with it. Um, I've lifted some huge, huge axles, um, like 14 bolt rear ends from, from Jeep stuff um, with it. I've lifted that, that fabrication cart with it actually before. And it did it. It didn't like it, but it did it. So I, like I said, I know that thing's close to a thousand pounds, but anyway, um, I use the heck out of that. Uh, there again, it's a Harbor Freight electric hoist that works really well. Um, you can see the ceiling height in the shop has been raised up. That's a 13 foot high ceiling. Um, that ceiling over there, where it looks like a soffit, but that's the original ceiling height. That's about nine feet. Uh, the ceiling was raised up so that I could put this car hoist in there. The car hoist is 12 feet high. So now that you're dizzy from me pointing the camera everywhere, that's pretty much it. Um, so yeah, thanks for walking around with me. Like I said, I will probably do a more specified, more specific uh, video on the lathe itself. Once I get a few more things dialed in, I'll kind of go over the whole machine and just, just to kind of put it up because I like doing that stuff. Like I said, once I get everything else dialed in, I'll, I'll get right. Same with the CNC mill. Get it all finished up, show you how the coolant system works. Maybe I'll cut a part on it, that kind of stuff. But anyway, just want to do a quick a quick walk around, which turned into an extremely long walk around. But now you know what's in my shop. Thanks. Take care.